So first of all, I want to thank uh, the guys from the group uh, in Facebook, uh, the Jarek Builders, where I got all these files and all the information I needed to make this. So first, we 3D printed all these parts. Some of them didn't come out uh, too great, so with the 3D printed pen, I'm going to fix some of that. Then there's a lot of sanding to level everything out. By the way, this is all printed in PETG because it's a bit stronger. We check the fit and we proceed to sand all the edges so they can all glue together perfectly. I got some dowels so I can cut in pieces so we can all put these together because they have holes at the end of each part so each part can go in the way it's supposed to. I am using an acrylic glue to put it all together and some CA glue at the edges. And just push the dowels together and there you go. Make sure everything is tight. And we continue this process all the way around. Some parts need persuasion. <laughs> I use some duct tape in some parts to just keep them together and tight. One of the things that I did was I glued both halves first and then I put those halves together. This is the easiest way I found to putting them together so we wouldn't have one last piece that would be very difficult to glue in. This way both parts just glue one to the other. Put a little bit of force and hammering it in and of course some duct tape to keep it together. I made sure it was as close as round as possible and put some duct tape wherever it needed some persuasion to get close or closer to that measurement. After everything is dry, we take all the tape out and verify that all the joints are pretty well glued and there's still some small imperfections. So I use a 3D print pen to fill out all those little holes. Something else that I did, I did some welding with a soldering iron to help it get more strength. And then the sanding starts. And more sanding. Want to make everything look like one complete piece and more sanding. Did I tell you guys that you have to sand a lot here? A funny note, I do not like sanding. This is one of the things that you have to do the most in this project. So there you have the top already sanded and we have to fit in some of the pieces. If you can see, I just wanted to see how it looked and I put some silver paint on it. Bad idea, but it got covered up, it's okay. So we put in some of the smaller pieces that go in with some CA glue. And we prepare all the buttons and stick them together one by one. There are a lot of buttons. They stick to the tray and the tray fits perfectly in their place. There you go. Like a piano. 
Now using the method from Van Oak Props, using a little bit of acetone and some spot filler, just make a concoction, just put it in a container, a little bit of acetone, mix it together. And then we can apply this to the whole piece with a brush. And that'll help us fill all those little lines that are left on the 3D print. And we do this to the whole piece. Guess what's next, guys? When it's dry, more sanding. Did I tell you guys I hate sanding? Yeah. We keep sanding with a higher grit sandpaper. All the edges, all those little spots. And then we use some filler primer. If there's any other imperfections or other spots that need some filling, we could see this after we put the primer in. So I primed everything, the keys, the buttons, everything. And there's still some small spots that need more filling. What do we use? Spot putty. We put more spot putty on, on all these spots. And of course, guess what? We sand them down again with even higher grit sandpaper after putting another coat of filler primer. And this is how it looks. And then I painted it with aluminum paint and I started to freak out. I found it too shiny. I didn't know what I was gonna do. But the guys in the Facebook group helped me out, told me when I put the clear coat on, it's going to be great. So first, I used a stick to measure out all the circles I needed. I measured out halfway, put an L in the center, and then I could mark another hole that I made the measurement I needed so I can cut out all the circles. If you have a large compass, you won't need to do this, but I didn't have one, so I made one up. We drilled some pilot holes so we can start cutting the rest with the jigsaw. Like I said, all the design and shapes and measurements were taken from the Facebook group of the Jarek Builders. And I once again thank them all for all their information, all their help on this build. So now to round it off a little bit, again I nail it to the table and just sand it a little bit. And now the bottom layer, I wanted it thicker since I had it half an inch. I glued two together and then started with the rails that are going up to make the base for the cylinder. So I glued them and screwed them in in their place, drilling pilot holes so it would be easier. And the top part is just one layer of half inch plywood and then I glued and stapled them in in marks that I had done prior. And now I'm cutting a 3 8 flexible wood that I bought just for this. And the tricky part trying to align it all so it could be straight. I cut it too exact and there were some parts that didn't line up but then I fixed it later on. You don't have to necessarily use flexible wood but this was what was easier and more available for me and I thought it would be stronger. Now I'm drilling a hole in the bottom because this table will not be battery operated for now and I would like to put cable through it. And using sanding sealer, I put a couple of coats on it, trying to make the wood as soft as possible after sanding. And as you can see, 
it did not work and I had to use another method. Now I 3D printed the bottom parts and they did not have pilot holes so I had to make a jig and drill holes so I could put some dowels so it could be connected the same as the top part. And we do that on both sides of all the pieces. And as we did with the top part, we put in the dowels and some glue and tape. And in some of the parts we use clamps to just maintain it a bit straighter while it dry. While that dried, I sanded all the parts, the top part, and put some sanding sealer on it. This part won't be seen, but I still wanted it as smooth as I could. And started sanding. And like I said last time, I don't like sanding. It's rough, it's coarse, and it gets everywhere. I also did some plastic welding to just uh, strengthen the joints a bit more and it's just using a soldering iron with some of the filament and melting it all together so it could be like a, a weld and there we have all the parts welded on the inside and underneath and some parts on the top and again more sand this is something that if you want to get into doing a project like this or any other project that requires sanding, like me, you have to get mentally prepared. So again, I use the Van Oaks technique with the Bondo spot filler and some acetone for the 3D printed parts. And after noticing that the wood wasn't completely smooth I used some spackling plaster mixed it with some water pretty runny so I can just put multiple coats on it with a brush as you can see I had painted it already silver but it wasn't as smooth as I wanted so this really helped out let it dry put a couple of coats on and then sand and sand again in the end, it wasn't perfect, but it was much better than it was in the beginning with just the sanding sealer. And now we sand and paint all the 3D printed parts and every part of it and just put everything together. And this is the base. And afterwards with the top on it, this is what we have until now. Completed with all clear coat and everything. First, we use these decoders that I bought through the Dejaric Builders Facebook group. And I also bought some other parts that we're gonna see later on in the video. So we put them through the holes. They basically screw in. And if they don't, just make the hole a little bigger and they will, you can even glue them in. I 3D printed the knobs, so just press them in. Even though they don't do nothing now, if you would like in the future to use them as controls for the game in that group there's a whole section explaining where you can get the parts and also how to make your dejaric table so you can play with it also i 3d printed these cylinders where the lights are going to be and i bought these also through the group these are blue and red acrylic circles which i'm going to sand down so i can diffuse the light a little bit So I stick them all to this double sided tape so I can put the cylinders on there and they won't move. So to glue down the cylinders what I'm going to use is a little bit of super glue. Just pour it a little bit on this cardboard not on the acrylic and use a toothpick so we can carefully put a little bit of this super glue around this 3D printed cylinder and that's enough 
to glue them on. Man, I wish that worked this fast. So to power up the lights, I'm using a Ryobi inverter with a simple battery because I'm just going to use Christmas lights that have seven functions to light up the table. Since it's going to be mostly decorative, it's not going to be to play with. So these lights, I just stick them through the holes where the acrylic circles are supposed to be, stick the lead into the bottom part of the cylinder and just push them in. No glue at all. If they do not go in, just use a drill bit and just make them a little bit bigger. This way, if you need to change them, it's easier to take out. Let me do that on both sides. Now these stickers also got the design through the group. I printed out myself and I had to cut them all out. And this is the, the order in which they have to go. So I used this as my guide and just stuck them all on there and then put a light coat of clear on them to protect them more. And here they are. I also numbered them so I know in which order they go you see one two and three and that's starting from the left to the right i'm also going to secure the inverter so i'm just using some plumber strap to secure it in there so it won't rattle if i ever need to move the table around so since the inverter if you can see it's upside down i'm going to put this piece of pvc panel right it's thin and i'm just going to use it as a base to put some screws in so I can use them as buttons. So I mark the placement of each button for the controls for the lights and also to turn on and off the inverter on the PVC as you can see here. And I'm going to drill some holes, put in some screws and use these as push buttons and levers to control these lights. There's a lot of ways that this can be done but I'm just looking for the easy and quick way to do it. So this is for the lights, has a couple of nuts on them so we can press that button and the other one is just a straight screw about half an inch so it could give some pressure up towards the inverter and turn it on. I'm just checking if it fits, if they're correct and if you can see a little bit towards the left and the right corners you can see the lights are on so it's working. So I secure that also from the bottom. So now back to the buttons. Since I numbered them, I put them in order. First put them in the channel where they go so I can space them correctly and then start gluing from the middle towards the sides. Inside the channels, there are two little tabs that make contact with the keys. So I just put some super glue on there and when I press them down, they make contact and they get glued to the table. So I'm using now some for rent signs to use the, the plastic on them because I'm going to make some displays for those little spots that you see there. I cut them into squares, make sure they fit, because normally they would have some screens there displaying different functions. But since this is purely decorative, I'm just gonna make it up as it was fake. So I push them in there, make sure it's snug, and then I mark the opening so I can make the designs inside, cut them out, and then light them from the back. I also made a box with thin PVC so I can put lights in there and illuminate this plastic. I'm going to put a little bit of aluminum tape in there to just use it as a reflective surface for the lights. And here is the piece all cut out. I'm using this from a face shield clear plastic so I can put it behind it. And I glued it. And then I colored the front of it just enough so we can see through the holes. 
And then the back part, that's why I use clear plastic so we can sand it so we can diffuse a little bit of the light. There are two parts of this graphic that has colors. So I just painted it with a little bit of a magic marker. So I'm sticking the lights onto the boxes so we can light up this graphic. And I'm just sticking it on there without cutting or anything. I just want to do it the simplest way possible. And then just have the bottom part stick out in both sides. And then we glue the graphic to the front. And if you need to trim the edges, all we do is trim a little bit. And then we can put them inside the space. Make sure it's snug. I didn't have to use any glue because I made them as snug as possible. But if not, just a little bit of hot glue to hold it in just in case we need to pull it out very carefully without damaging the leads on the top we just push it in a little bit and there you see the graphics and we do that in both sides I changed up the graphics a little bit on both sides just to make it a little bit interesting I don't know if anybody's gonna notice but yeah I know now using a lazy Susan I stick it onto this aluminum circle is 24 inches uh, 1 8 thick so I can sand it down and give it a brush aluminum look I use different grit sandpaper to do this it took a while but it looked pretty good so I also send out to make this sticker in a Dejaric group you can send out for it but for me here where I live in Puerto Rico it was better for me just to take the graphic over to a print shop and have them make it for me so I'm using a little bit of soap and water just to make it slippery so I can move it around and put it in place. I also put a little bit of soap and water onto the aluminum plate. And now we just try to stick the graphic on there as best possible and smooth it out. My graphic wasn't completely round. So yeah, there's two sections that didn't make it all the way to the end, but it's okay. I think it gives a character and it was a story maybe I can make up in the future about how this table was done incorrectly. <laughs> I don't know. It's a story I can make up some other time. I can't come up with nothing now. And now slowly we peel off the top protective coating and just make sure we take out all the bubbles. And there you go. Another thing that the table needs is pinstriping, of course. And in the group, you can get this template to help you just mark where the pinstripes go. It's a lot of help, but still, the pinstriping is very difficult because it's a round or circular piece of furniture. It's a little difficult to get them pretty straight. Some parts I had to do three and four times, but it was painstakingly awful. But I had it. But I did it, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. Maybe in the future, I'll take them out again and just do them all over. But for now, I think it looks pretty good.